have you ever been in a situation wherein you feel that uh, your enemies are all around you? Parang you feel that um, there's so many people that are against you. Some people that are talking behind your back and you feel that um, they are plotting harm against you. Who, who has uh, experienced that? Huh? I'm sure a lot of us has experienced it, um, maybe sometime in our past. But, um, you know, this, itong mga trials and persecution, this is normal. In fact, even David, who is considered the man after God's own heart, have experienced all of this uh, persecution and even betrayal from his closest friends. And even his son mismo nagbetray sa iyaha. So we can learn from his psalms how we can respond to this unfair treatment from other people. And instead of uh, dwelling with all these negativities, instead we focus on the Lord. Okay? So our passage for this morning is in Psalm 5. Previously, we, we discussed uh, Psalm 1, 2, 3, 4. We're now in Psalm 5. Yung Psalm 5, okay, this is the title, For the Director of Music, for Pipes, a Psalm of David. Okay, Psalm 5 is a morning prayer. The author is said to be David, but we don't know exactly when he wrote this particular psalm because we don't have any clue. It could be any time in his uh, life. Kasi grabe yung young life, if you look at his life, he had been subject of persecution from other people and other people are trying to take his life. And then um, the title says, um, For Pipes. Um, in other translations, sinabi for flutes. So in other words, etong psalm, this is intended to be sung. Okay, to be sung in yung temple nila. Okay, so let's go to the passage. Let's try to understand okay, uh, the psalm of David and let's try to learn from his psalm how we could respond to all of these um, difficulties and persecution. Verse 1. Ingo siya, Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. Ginoo nga akong Dios og hari pamatia ang akong pagampo og pagagulo pamatia ang akong pagpangayo kanimo og tabang kay diha kanimo ako nagaampo So we can see here that David is crying out to the Lord or Yahweh asking God to help him Okay he's crying for help So sabi niya consider my lament when you say lament Sabi ni saya, pag agulo, uh, it, it's considered quiet murmuring, uh, groaning, whispering. Na you can hear the groaning, but other people do not understand. So, you can see here that uh, David was in pain, no? That he, that he would groan, he would mourn. You know, all of us react differently, no? When people attack us, when people persecute us, lahilahi ang atong mga um, reaction. Some people would hide, some people would magmukmuk na sa iyang kwarto, di na magawas. Some people would uh, go to his friends for encouragement or comfort. Or ang uban tao, kung gilibak, manlibak po balik, no? They, they take things on their own hands. They take revenge. No, so, so different people react differently. But we can see from David that he respond, responded to all this persecution by coming to the Lord, by approaching God. So, you know, every pain is an opportunity for us to grow. Every pain is an opportunity for us to be closer to the Lord. I can say, masulti na ako na, katong mga times na when I am in difficulty, those are the times that I am closest to the Lord. Those times na I feel that um, there is a persecution, okay, and people are misjudging me, and those are the times that I feel closer to the Lord because I would come to God in prayer. So, may purpose ang kanin mga persecution from other people. There are purposes, no? So, we have to learn from it, no? From all of these things that are happening to us. Okay, and we can see here, sa verse 2, sabi niya, David cries out to God, his king. His king. So, remember, si David... He himself is a king, no? but he considered himself nothing. He considered that there is someone greater than him, and that is 
the Lord Almighty. He considered God as sovereign, that God is his king. So makita ni mo, humble si David. So when we approach God, we should be humble. Kasi we're nothing compared to God, di ba? No matter how successful you are, no matter how intelligent you are, in the eyes of the Lord, those are nothing to him. So that's why we come to the Lord humble, no? Just like David, he prayed, Lord, you are my God, help me. So he acknowledges that he is under God's authority. And David is a servant of God. Do you know that in ancient times, no? The ancient times, the mga king, no? Uh, ang role ng king is to protect his servants, his subjects. That's the responsibility of the king. And in return, the subjects will pay tribute to the king or will serve the king. And sometimes, uh, there are certain states, they would offer their allegiance to this king for protection. So, yung mga ganun. So, sometimes they will, okay, uh, we will be under you, king, but in return, you protect us. Ganun na nangyayari in ancient times. Kasi may mga bigger uh, nations that have armies, hindi ba maliliit, so they want to be under the protection of a king, a powerful king. Obviously, mamili ka, dito na ka sa powerful king. And David considered God as his king. So, you are my king. I am your servant. You have to help me. You have to protect me. Okay? So, ayun ang thinking ni David. Now, does this also apply to us? And in fact, as Christians, no? Sabi ng Bible, John 1.12, to those who believe him, he gave them the right to become children of God. We can go to God in prayer because he is our Abba Father. He is our Father. So, mas labaw pa sa king. Oh, he's our king, yes. He's also our father. So, not a confidence to come to the Lord in prayer to ask for his help. And then remember, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, ingon ni Peter, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So, who are these righteous? It can be considered mga Christians because we become righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. So, the Lord is attentive to our prayers, to the prayers of His children. Okay? So, yun yun. And then let's go to uh, verse 3. David says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. In ikabuntag, Andamon ko ang akong kaugalingon sa pag-ampo kanimo. Dadon ko kanimo ang akong mga hangyo ug maghulat ako sa imong tubag. So why did David say, In the morning you hear my voice? Is he trying to say that kung mag-ampo ta sa gabi or sa hapon or in the afternoon or evening, God will not hear our prayer? Well, David is not saying that. David is saying that, he, he prays every morning and he knows that the Lord hears his prayer. I know um, we have different time zones. Ang uban tao may mga morning person, may mga afternoon person, may mga evening person. But um, David prayed to the Lord at his best. No, Yung best time na is morning. Okay? Some of us um, wake up very late. So you, the first thing you do when you wake up is to pray to the Lord because that is your best time. Before you start everything else, you pray to the Lord. That is how David uh, do, no? David prays every morning. David prays every morning. Or in other words, the start of the day niya, mag-ampo. And Jesus also did that. No? When Jesus was on earth, we can see in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, sabi dere, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. Ang kanindot mang God, pag very early in the morning, in a desolate place, there is no destruction. In fact, I, I feel guilty about this because um, kasi ako, I wait, wake up late and pag matan ako, matan ang mga tao sa balay and it's difficult to pray because there's so many distractions. So, uh, this passage also talks to me that I should wake up early to have my devotion. Kasi, kasi when you do your devotion in the middle of the day or in the evening, lahi ragyod, no? Lahi ragyod na uh, you are alone, no? In a quiet place. That's why it's quiet time. Talagang, it's better, no? Better. 
And David prays to the Lord every morning. He does not say that, Lord, I pray to you whenever I need something. Did you notice? So every day, kung may kailangan siya wala, he see to it that he would pray to the Lord. So the question is, how is our prayer life? Is it also every day? Um, or do we approach God because we need something? Some of us here are parents, no? Or just imagine, kamo parents, mga mga batan on. Imagine you are a parent. And do you want that your child will come to you? Dad, uh, or tai, nai, uh, mga iko, baon, or something. So, muduo lang imong anak ni mo kung na ay kailangan. Of course, as a parent, you don't want, di ba? You want your child to approach you whether he needs something or not. Because you want to have this fellowship, this communion with your child. And I think the same is true with God. God desires that we communicate with Him daily. Daily. Not during the time that we are in need. Kailangan, we have to develop that life of prayer. Okay? We have to develop that. Just like we talk to God as if He is our Abba Father, as our, our, as our dad. No? Talk naturally, hindi yung scripted, hindi yung parang very rigid. No, we can come to the Lord. No? Uh, talk to Him just like a son or daughter talking to his parents. And then, sabi niya, um, whenever we come to the Lord in prayer, um, we come to the Lord, we want to experience His presence. No? We, we, we focus on the Lord um, uh, since we are talking about prayer. So whenever we pray, hindi lang puro request. No? We have to spend time praising God, no? uh, acknowledging what He has done for us, thanking Him. No? We focus on the Lord. And then yung, yung request na to, o kasama na rin yun, but our prayer should be more of communicating with the Lord. We talk to God just like a father or a friend. No? No? We, we talk to Him. No? And then David says, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. Itong ano, uh, I lay my request um, in ESV, it says that I prepare a sacrifice for you. Sa binisaya, uh, translation, dad on ko kanimo ang akong mga hangyo o maghulat ako sa imong tubag. The word here signifies some orderly, systematic matter, manner. So whenever uh, David pray, parang systematic, parang may appointment, may orderly, yun ang style niya, okay? Yun ang style. I'm not saying that you, we have to do that, but uh, whenever he approach God, he does it as if he is offering sacrifice. So, di ba, in the Old Testament, when you offer sacrifices, uh, you prepare the wood, and then you prepare the animal. So, very orderly yung uh, prayer niya. That is his style. But I'm not saying that... Um, that's the only proper way because we can also pray spontaneously. Okay? And then, yung the word, I lay my request, in Hebrew, yung term na yun, it, it has also military connotation. Uh, it is like a soldier coming to his military commander, I'm ready to listen to what you're going to order me. Parang something like that. So, David waits expectantly uh, of the Lord as if a soldier, kumbaga, general, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you or I'm waiting for your command or something like that. So we can learn from David's response no? or, or David's uh, manner of praying is that uh, he come to the Lord uh, prepared, no? orderly, and then expectantly. What do you mean by that? No? What do you mean by uh, praying expectantly, waiting for the Lord expectantly? Um, I understand that the Ba we will make our request to the Lord. And whenever we make our request, um, we should also believe that the Lord will give it to us according to his will. No? Dapat um pagampu nato, we we should have that expectant heart na Lord, yes, I believe that you can give this to me. No? You can answer my prayer according to your will. Okay, not not my will, ha, but your will be done. So, so dapat we have to give God room to say no. If especially kung para niya, that is not the best uh, answer to our prayer. Because maybe God wants something much better no, for you. He can say no to your prayer, pero mas labaw pa yang yang yahatag kanato. So, just like David, we pray 
expectantly. So this passage, you know, um, this one, verse 1 to 3 pa lang, uh, I think this would also challenge us how we pray. No? How is our prayer life? How is our prayer and quiet time? Is it also every morning, just like David? Mm, smile, smile. Okay. Um, you know, we have to come to the Lord daily praying and listening to Him because He enjoys our company. In fact, dapat kita, we should enjoy to be in the presence of the Lord. No? The usual excuse that I will hear other people, wala mo kay time. Busy man go, daghan mo kay buhaton. That, but that's the usual excuse. But you know, yung excuse na I have no time, that is a myth. Myth. Dili na tinood. Why? Because, di ba, we spend time eating, di ba? Uh, going to work, taking a bath, why do we do those things? Because we find it important. So, the reason why we don't pray and read the Bible every day is because we don't find it important. Because if we find it important, we will do it. We will not make it as an excuse because the Word of God is our daily bread. We need God's nourishment. So, it's Dapat dili na to himong excuse na kwan mong God busy kayo ana. And you know, I'm also guilty of this, no? Although um, in fairness, I I study the word of God every day, I pray every day, but I feel that there are times that wala na yung quality, na parang girash na nato just for the sake na makaampo ta. And I think it, it it would be good to follow Jesus example in the morning kasi hilom no, you you you, you soak yourself in the presence of the Lord. No, I, I, I miss those times that when, when I just pray, Lord, you, you just hear the Lord speak to you. No? So I think it's, this is also a challenge to me and to every one of us that we have to spend this time, no? just like David, every day, make known our request to God because the Lord wants our attention. No? The Lord wants our attention. Okay, let's move on. In verse 4, sabi ni David, For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. Ikaw ang Diyos nga dili mahimuot sa kadautan. Ang dautan dili makapuyo uban kanimo. Itong Psalm, in verse 4, David shifts his attention to God's character. Okay, remember this Psalm is a Psalm of David praying for protection against his enemies. No? So, David shifts his attention to God's character. And what character is that? God's holiness. Sabi na, Lord, you take no pleasure in wickedness. God is incompatible with evil. Where God is, evil cannot exist. Evil and God, they cannot coexist. And sabi na, with you, evil people are not welcome. Ang dautan, dili makapuyo uban kanimo. Evil people are not welcome. In other translation, in ESV, NASB, no evil dwells with you. So they cannot, evil cannot live with God. Do you know that in ancient Near East, ancient Near East, ito yung panahon na gisulat ni David, um, the people around there worship many gods. And they consider their gods holy, but they don't consider their gods moral. What do you mean by that? Diba, daghan mga Diyos? Para nila, holy ay lang ginoo, pero ang holiness nila, concept nila holiness, dili pasabot ana, they are morally upright. Because there were gods, small g, that uh, that acted in anger, lust, personal gain, and then some some of the small g gods would take revenge. No? Diba, if you know, the, even mga Greek mythology, mga gods, diba, small g, diba, mga baloki, no? parang god of mischief, or something like that. Pero, Kumbaga, ang gods nila, dili yung pareha sa, ga, sa iginoon na to na, na morally upright. So, David is saying, our God, Yahweh, is different from all these gods. Because God is not only holy, yung concept na holy niya is God is good. No evil can live with Him. So, ito yung concept ng atong Diyos. Unlike other gods, small gods, na they consider it holy, pero hindi naman uh, holy in the sense na morally upright, parang something like that. So, Yahweh cannot 
coexist with evil. So why is it important that David recognize that God is holy? So ito yung continuation. Verse 5. Arrogant cannot stand in his presence. You hate all who do wrong. Dili makabarog sa imong atubangan ang mga mapahitas on. Imong gikapungtan ang tanang nagahimo og dautan. The arrogant, no, the arrogant or the boastful. You know, God hates the proud. In fact, we can uh, there's so many passages in the Bible, the Proverbs, and uh, I'll call your attention in James 4:6. God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. So what's wrong with being proud? Why is God so opposed to those who are proud? Because a person who is proud is saying, I don't need God. I'm better. Kubaga, I don't need God. I'm independent. Something like that. And God does not want that because God is sovereign. He knows that we are nothing. He wants us to be dependent on Him. Kaya mauto, ayon ayaw ni Lord ang mga prideful people. No? So we have to be careful also. And sabi niya, um, those who are proud cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. Yahweh hate those people who do wrong. And, and who are those people who do wrong? I think all of us. Sinners. Okay, there is a saying that, you know, God hates the sin, but not the sinner. We, we, we know that. But here, it appears that David is saying, God hates the sinner. God hates the sinner. Is that possible that God hates the sinner and not the sin? I think it's also possible because, um, you know, ang hatred ng ginoo is considered holy hatred. Hindi yung worldly hatred na musoko ka for no reason at all. God has the right to be angry at his creation because of sin, because he is holy, he is pure. Sin cannot stand before him. So, kubaga, kung kita lang, masunog kita. Even if you look at the Old Testament, even si uh, Isaiah, sabi na, woe is me, uh, a man of unclean lips. So, so, mga ganun. So, even Moses, no, sabi na, when he saw the burning bush, diba, he took a, took off his sandals kasi sobrang holy ang ginoo. No? He cannot stand before God. So, in other words, we are doomed before a holy God. Kung kita lang, we are doomed because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But, but that's the bad news, but there's a good news. No? By God's grace, no? He sent His only begotten Son that through His blood, through the, His sacrifice, we can stand before God because we can be reconciled, no? We can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. So, buti na lang, di ba? So, God hates those who do wrong. So, it, I think it makes sense also, di ba? God hates sin and also the sinner who refuses to repent. No? Okay? Verse 6, You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, you, Lord, detest. Imong laglagon ang mga bakakon, o imong gikasilagan ang mga namumuno o ang mga maluibon. David says that um, God would destroy liars and evil people. Okay, you may be wondering, huh? Okay, David believed that God will destroy these liars, these bloodthirsty, these deceitful. But how come there are so many murderers, rapists, liars in this world? Parang dili ba tinood ni siya? Well, th- this passage refers to the final judgment. Well, it's true that right now, ipasagda ng gino, ito mga murderers, rapists, killers, liars. But the Lord is being patient with them. No? We discussed last week about Second Peter. The Lord is patient toward us. Kasi kung kumubalik ng ginoo, then there will be no more chance for these people to repent. So, the Lord is being patient 
giving opportunity for all these evil people to repent. In fact, kita, we can, we can consider our, ourselves liars also. Diba? Bloodthirsty. Because whenever we think evil against our neighbors, we think murderous thoughts. We are committing murder in our heart. Diba? Tayo rin yun. But thanks be to God, God was, God was patient to us. Kaya kung niabot ng ginoo before tan na kailan niya, so paano na? So we have to be very thankful. And in, show, in, in fact, the Lord is being patient to give all these people the opportunity to repent. Okay? And then, um, God will not let all these people uh, live forever. Because we can also look at uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. God will destroy these evil people, but not now. Okay? God is giving them the chance to repent. And then in Psalm 1, 5, Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, meaning in the final judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. So in other words, all these people, all these evil people will be destroyed. No? And that is when Jesus will come again. No? So, yon. so that is why we have to exert all effort to share the gospel. Because there might be some of our friends, family members, na wala pa nakibalo sa bagong balita, sa bayong balita. We have to share it to them. Because, you know, the Lord hates these people unless they come to Him in repentance. So we have to take uh, this seriously also. We have the responsibility. Okay, let's go to verse 7. But I, meaning David, no? But, kasi sabi na, kati mga dautan tao, they cannot stand before you. Pero ako, but I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence, I bow down toward your holy temple. Apan ako, makasulod sa imong balaan nga templo, tungod sa imong dakong gugma kanako. Og dito simbahon ko ikaw nga may pagtahod. Okay, so let's uh, break it down. So, diba remember, the evil people cannot stand before God. But David can come to God's house and temple. Okay, house, temple. Um, there are scholars or uh, yeah, commentators who criticize this one. Sabi na, oy, kaning Psalm 5, dili. This is not written by David because it mentions about the temple. At that time, there is no temple yet because the temple was built by uh, David's son, Solomon. So this could not be written by David. But take note that the Hebrew word used here, sa house and temple, could also be used uh, in the word tabernacle. Tabernacle is the same Hebrew word. So the tabernacle okay, is where God's presence lives. And, and then, by the way, we will study about this tabernacle uh, next year when we go into the second half of Exodus. In fact, if you notice, second half, half of Exodus, God gives a very detailed instruction on how to build that tabernacle. Itong tabernacle, this is where God lives. Well, well uh, it's a sim symbol because, you know, God cannot be contained in a box, no? Uh, it is a symbol where God lives. No? Um, it is a symbol of God's presence. Okay, in other words. So, uh, when David says that I can come into your house, I can uh, come to your holy temple, it's not the physical building. It's, it's, it's more than that. Okay? The temple, the house of the Lord, is more than the building. But it is the presence of the Lord. So, sinasabi ni David, I can come into the presence of the Lord in prayer. Unlike these evil people, this arrogant, they cannot stand in the presence of the Lord, these evil people, dili sila. Because God hates them. But ako, pwede. Pero sinabi ba ni David, I can come to the presence of the Lord because maayo ako. Oh, diko? Because I'm not, I'm not a liar, I'm not, a blood, I'm not bloodthirsty, I'm not, I'm not uh, all of these people. No. Sabi niya, by your great love. By God's great mercy and love. Why? Because David is a liar. 
He's a murderer, ad adulterer. Diba? He, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He killed the husband of Bathsheba. So David is not a righteous man on his own. But by God's great love. You know, in other translations, in other steadfast love, uh, ESV. Sa Nasbi, loving kindness. Sa New Living Translation, unfailing love. Okay, so it's by God's great love and mercy that David is able to come into the presence of the Lord. You know, David um, looks to the Messiah, Christ, no? Kita, we look back on what Jesus has done on the cross. You know, it's, it's because at God's mercy is shown in the cross. The cross is where God's justice and mercy meet. God's justice demands that sinners be punished. Kita. But God, God's mercy um, is satisfied with the sacrifice of Jesus. Kasi Jesus took on his body our sins on the cross, no? Uh, he was crucified. He took our sins. He bare the cross for us that, so that we can be reconciled with God. So because of, of this forgiveness that we have, no? So as Christians, we can come before the presence of the Lord in prayer, okay? So ito yung nindot, no? And sabi niya, I come before God in reverence, in holy fear, reverence, no, nay pagtahod sa ginoo. So, dapat na atay respeto sa ginoo whenever we come to Him. That is why whenever we come to Him, if we are reminded of any sin, we have to confess. Because the Bible says that if we cherish any sin, the Lord will not listen to our prayer. Psalm 66 verse 18. Okay. And, and then, so, unsamay, so every time David comes to the Lord, what does he pray about? So, we can see in this passage, in uh, Psalm 5, David made three prayer requests. The first prayer request can be found in verse 8. No? So verse 8, sabi ni David, Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Ginoo, giyahi ako diha sa imong pagkamatarong kay daghan ang akong mga kaaway o himuang sayon ang akong pagsunod sa imong kabubuton. So David's first prayer request is for God's guidance. You know, we sh um, if you look at David, no, he does not rely on his own. No, he trusts in the Lord. Dapat inanap mo ta. In fact, his son also wrote in Proverbs, no, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. So David would ask for the Lord's guidance on what to do. In fact, in Psalm 32, verse 8, ingon siya. In the Lord, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. So question, how exactly does God instruct and teach us the way we should go? It's through His Word. That is why it's very important, my brothers and sisters, to read the Word of God. Kaya dito na ito mahibaon ang iyang mga instructions. He will guide us through His Word. The Word contains the revealed will of God. But aside from His Word, you know, God can use other people to speak to us. God can use the sermon to speak to you. God can use your parents, God the, adv the, God the advice of friends. And God can use also the circumstances. No, uh, God will close doors and open another door. So that is how God uh, leads us. You know, God is interested in our lives. I, I know, ah, oh, God is there, He's not interested in me. No, God is very interested with us. And we can see that David, the, um, the man after God's own heart, would want God to guide him. So, dapat kita inana po ta. We, we, we have to ask the Lord to guide us on what to do. For example, uh, especially mga important decisions in our life, or even mga not so important decisions, you ask the Lord for guidance. Lord, who do you want me to, to marry? Okay? Lord, I have several suitors. I don't know who to choose or something like that. Or it's a big problem. Or, or Lord, wala mo may nanguyab na ako. I pray for your 
will no, to prepare the right man and woman for me or something like that. Lord, when should I get married? No? Who is the person to marry? Anong course na ako sa college? Do not neglect to come to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him. You know, the Lord will honor your prayer. And you know, and, and importantly, you have to be sensitive also. No? Sometimes the Lord will speak to you during your quiet time. He will impress in your heart. Okay? Um, and, and He will confirm it through His word. Hindi lang feelings, by the way, baka mag, ano mo, I, I feel that the Lord is speaking to me. It's, it's not based on feeling. It's based on the will, on the word of God. And you test it. And the Lord will confirm it through other people. No? Because kasi kung yun ang will ni Lord, He will make straight, diba? He will make your path straight. Kasi kung may mga obstacle, teka lang, baka hindi will ni Lord. Bakit may mga obstacle along the way? Baka the Lord is telling me something. Baka this is not the way that I should go. No? Kasi kung will the Lord yan, He will prepare the way for you. He will make straight yung plan. He will make it known to you. No? He, will, he will give you confirmation through His Word, through other people. Mag, mag ano yan? Mag, uh, uh, yeah, mag coincide yan. No? Dili siya mag contradict. Kasi kung mag contradict, mm, you have to wait. You have to pray more. No? So, God wants His best for us. Not His second best. Dapat His best. We have to look for God's best, no? We have to wait on the Lord. Huwag ta magmadali. Kasi ang problema, pag nagmadali ta, we will miss God's best. Sasabihin natin, ay, ala ka, baka maubusan ako ng maniligaw. So, ito na lang. But that is not God's best for you. You will end up with a heartbreak. And that is not what the Lord wants. So, we have to be patient. We have to ask the Lord for guidance. Just like David, no? Sabi niya, lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Sabi niya, lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Okay? And then, um, the second prayer request of David can be found in verses 9 to 10. David is praying for justice. Okay? Sa, sa verse 9, sabi niya, Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Dili kasaligan ang mga pulong sa ako mga kaaway kay ang ilang tinguha mao lamang ang paglaglag sa uban. So, the second prayer request of David is yung persecution na uh, na experience na. He's asking the Lord, Lord, uh, judge these people. I pray for your justice because these people are hurting me. Sabi niya, not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Etong heart, by the way, this heart is not the physical heart um, because the Hebrew word used here is kereb. Kereb refers to the inward parts, inward parts of a person. Sometimes it's called the seat of emotion or thought. No? Seat of emotion or thought. And the heart is filled with malice. In fact, Jesus also confirmed that when he said in Mark 7, 21 to 23, for it is written out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, Deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Okay, it's from the inside. Okay? Uh, ing- balik ta. Ingun siya, their throat is an open grave. With their tongues, they tell lies. Ang ilang tutunlan sama sa naabli nga lubnganan. Kay pulos pagpanglimbong ang nagagawas sa ilang mga baba. Okay, what do you mean by this one? Their throat is an open grave. Meaning, uh, this is a, a metaphor, no? Their words, the words, the hurtful words of the enemies of David bring death and destruction. It's like an open tomb that swallow people in. You know, words have power to edify. Words can build a person up. And you know, words can also tear down or destroy a person. Lies and hurtful words can destroy careers and reputation of a person. Do you agree? And sometimes, no, ito mga hurtful words, pag sobrang grabe na yod, it can destroy the self-esteem of a person. We have heard in the news si mga uh, Mga, mga teenagers na g- cyberbully, no? G- cyberbully kaayo, and then mag-commit suicide. 
dili nila makaya ang sakit, no? The hurtful words. And I think words, no? They're much worse than physical wounds. Kasi ang physical wounds, it would heal. But words, kung balik-balikan ni mo sa imong uh, hunahuna, if you keep on repeating those hurtful words in your mind, it will slowly, slowly destroy you. And in that sense, these words are like open grief. It can bring this destruction to a person. It can rob a person the will to live. Parang di na siya ganahan. No? Mag-suicide na lang. No? Sobrang sakit ng ilang uh, uh, dabate. No? That is why we, ha- we have to be careful with our words. No? Our words should be used to build other people up and not to cause people discouragement because uh, diba? uh, it's not good. And do you know, itong phrase, their, their throat is an open grave, you know, this was quoted by Paul, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 14. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. In other words, Paul is saying that all of us, there's no one righteous, all of us are sinners. Therefore, all of us have some way said hurtful things to other people. Personally, I, 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 can, I, I, agree, I agree with this. There was... Um, there are times that I would say hurtful words and, you know, sakit, no? But to reflect on it, no? Um, I just realized, sayop, sayop God. And, and I think all of us are like this, no? Christian or dile, there are times when we are angry, we will say hurtful words. That's why sabi ni James, you have to be careful with our words because it might destroy other people. So, this, the word of the Lord is a reminder to us, no, we have to be careful because our throats are like open graves. It will swallow other people alive. It will kill other people. It will kill the confidence, the self-esteem, the emotions of other people. So we have to be careful. So this is a reminder, church. Okay, let's go to verse 10. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them from their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. O Diyos, siluti ang ako mga kaaway, hinaot pa nga maunay sila sa ilang dautan nga mga tinguha. Isalikway sila tungod sa ilang daghang mga sala, kay misupak sila kanimo. You know, David is a king. As a king, he can order his soldiers, patya mga kaaway na ako, siluta sila. He can do that. But here, David is asking God to judge his enemies, not himself. He turned to the Lord for judgment. Sabi niya, let their intrigues be their downfall. So yung mga, or in ESV, let them fall by their own counsels. So in other words, yung mga plot na mga enemies nila, let them be the one that will destroy them, parang something like that. And then sabi ni David, banish them from their sins, uh, banish them from their many sins, parang declare them guilty and uh, banish them, for they have rebelled against you. You may be wondering, sakto ka ang gibuhat ni David? He was, he is praying that the Lord judge his enemies. Diba, we are now in the New Testament, diba sabi Jesus, that we have to love our enemies, we have to pray for those who persecute us. So is there a conflict between what David is saying and the teachings of Jesus? Well, okay, um, as Christians, we have to pray for our enemies. We pray that they will repent, that they will realize yung mga sayop nila, that they will repent and they will turn to the Lord for forgiveness. But if they refuse to repent to the Lord, God will judge them. Okay? God will judge them. So in other words, when we pray that the Lord will judge them, um, it is also God's will. The Lord will judge them in the end, but not now. So, so in, now we pray, Lord, we pray that they will repent. But if they will not repent, um, they will be punished by the Lord. So there's no conflict, in other words, no? There's no conflict. 
And then sabi niya, for they have rebelled against you. Meaning, the enemies of David ha, ha, have rebelled against God. You know, David is the king appointed by God. So, all of his enemies that are against David is as if they are against God. Kasi ang Diyos mismo ang nagbutang kay David as king. So, that is what he is saying. And then, remember, um, sin is a rebellion against God. Sin is a rebellion against God. Kasi, kasi yung rebellion, it is as if we're saying we don't need God. So it is a rebellion. And you know, David has many enemies. As Christians, we should expect also that we will have enemies because sabi Jesus, the world will hate you because they hated me first. So if, if we keep on doing the right thing, magtingala mo, nga naman suko mga ubang tao na tinarong man akong ibuhat, it's because of this. Because, diba, uh, in darkness and light, incompatible. That is why the world will hate us if we do the right thing. Okay, so let's go to verse 11. So the third prayer request of David, we can find that in verses 11 to 12. He prayed for God's blessing. Okay, verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Apan hinaot nga magmalipayon ang tanang nagadanggop kanimo, hinaot pa nga magawit sila sa kalipay. Panalipdi ang mga nagahigugma kanimo, aron magmalipayon sila. So what do you mean by refuge? Let all who take refuge in you be glad. So to take refuge, ang refuge, um, it is a place that you will go for safety, for rest, for protection, a place where you can be kept safe. So sabi niya, David is saying that let all people who make God the refuge, meaning uh, we make God our source of protection. Okay? And it's, and it's not only a temporary protection. No? We ask the Lord, no? we, we, we ask the Lord to be our permanent refuge. No? We ask the Lord to, we commit ourselves to the Lord that Siya nang bahala sa atong uh, kinabuhi. That, he'll, that He will take charge of our future, of our destiny. So those who take refuge in the Lord or Yahweh will be glad. No? Will be glad and joyful why, why, would be, why would we be glad? Because knowing that we are safe with the Lord, no? And the Lord will give us peace. Not the same peace that the world gives, but no, the peace only that we can experience through Jesus. So sabi na, we can find joy in the Lord. And then we can rely on God for protection. Sabi ni David, spread your protection over them. David is telling God, God, spread your protection over them that those who love you or those who love your name may rejoice in you. So when you say spread your protection, okay, we ask God to cover us, uh, cover us with His protection, just like a bird, you know, a bird, diba? Ang bird, diba? To, a bird will protect yung mga chicks niya. The bird will spread her wings, no? And cover the chicks that hide under her wings. In the same way, God will protect us just like that, that a mother bird, no? God will cover us with His wings, no? So we can rejoice in the Lord, no? Kasi God is our protector. He is our, he is our help, okay? And the last verse, verse 12. Surely, Lord Yahweh, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Kay gina panalanginan mo ginoo ang mga matarong ang imong gugma sama sa taming nga nagapanalipod kanila okay so we can relate we can relate this with Psalm 32 verse 10 many are the woes of the wicked but the lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him so sabi niya the lord Balita, the Lord bless the righteous. Teka, 
are, are we the one being referred to? Yes, because through the blood of Jesus, we are reconciled with the Lord. We can become the righteousness. We can become righteous because of His forgiveness. He has cleansed us from our sins so we can be considered righteous before God. So the Lord bless us Christians. The Lord bless Christians. And the Lord will surround us with His favor. Just like a shield. By the way, itong shield, uh, this shield, uh, the, the, the Hebrew word used here refers to a very large shield. Because there are two types of shield. May mga shield na maliit lang and malaki. So the, 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 the word, the Hebrew word shield here is the big shield. It covers the whole person. So in other words, it is as if David is saying that God will cover our whole person like, just like a very big shield and he will surround us with his favor. Okay, so what do you mean by this one? We are surrounded by God's favor. Does it mean that, um, does it mean that pag, if we have God's favor that uh, we will always be successful in all our endeavors? Does it mean that we will all get rich? That we will not get sick? No, that, no, it does not mean that way. Because, you know, what's the best favor that the Lord can surround us? What's the best favor? The best favor of the Lord is His presence and His forgiveness through Jesus Christ. That's the best favor because unlike other people, unlike unbelievers, we have God's presence in our life. And it is more important than material blessing because we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with us. Diba? Yun ang favor na wala sa uban. Not a personal relationship with the Lord. Yun, yun ang pinakamagandang favor. It's not, it's not the material things because Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So God's favor for us, no, is that we know that He will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter how difficult our problems are, no matter how difficult our troubles, no matter how many enemies we have, na sige tagi pang libak, sige tagi pang away, we can rest assured that, ah, sige lang mo, padayon lang mo, surely God will judge you someday na ay kaparusahan sa inyo. So I will not worry about you. Instead, I will focus on God because I have God's favor. I have God's blessing. I can trust in the Lord. So no evil in this world are too powerful for me. No? Sabi ng Bible no? in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation or trials has overtaken us except those which are ordinary. No? And with every temptation or trials, He will um, provide a way of escape. He will provide a way of escape. So, you know, we have God's favor. We are God's favor because we are God's children. We are God's children. Okay, so... So the, the issue here, church, is, or if you happen to listen to this message, do you have God's favor with you? Are you a child of God? Because if you are a child of God, palangga ka ng ginoo, you have His favor. That knowing that everything that happens to you, to us, is according to His sovereign will. Kano mga kalisod nato? Na ay purpose diha, mga igsoon. Just like Job, he experienced difficulty, but he's under the sovereign control of the Lord. The, his situation is under the sovereign control of the Lord. So don't be discouraged, my brothers and sisters. We have to stand firm because we have God's favor as a child of God. Okay? So can we please all stand and end in prayer?